Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I'm Jim, and today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022. And I've been playing around with this product for quite a while, and there's a lot of things I like about it. Uh, there's one thing I'm going to talk about that I really like about it. And when I learned how to use this tool and control it, I feel like my edits got better. So let's walk through that. Here's a photo, and what I've done is I've already cropped it, and I've also applied some stuff, which I've currently got the preview off, but I've applied AI Auto, made some refinements, and then also adjusted the verticals. So now the photo looks like that. Kind of straightened up some of the lines, brightened it with AI Auto and all that. So again, base photo, current photo. And what I want to do, and this is, I find myself doing this all the time when I edit, whether it's a cityscape or a landscape, and that is the sky's usually a little bit brighter, and I want to adjust that separately um, from how I want to adjust the foreground, which is often a little bit darker. This is a classic example of that. This is the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum, as you can read on the sign, which is in Glasgow, Scotland. I love Scotland. Scotland is fantastic. God, I want to go back. Anyway, that was from a number of years ago, but here's what I want to talk about, and that is when I go into effects, I want to isolate these two, and the tool that I'm talking about specifically is a masking tool, and it's luminosity masking. When I learned how to use luminosity masking and control it, I realized that I had amazing amount of control over my photos and my edits got better. So let me show you that. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm going to click Lumen. And if you look at it and just click View, you can see, I mean, there it is, the luminosity mask, which, by the way, is a mask based on light values. So the bright stuff, the white or light gray, is where the mask applies, and the darker stuff is where it doesn't apply. And it varies based on the shades of gray. But you can control this further with levels. And so what I often do is I will come in and do some things kind of like this, where I'm basically just trying to make this sky as white as possible and everything else kind of uh, as black as possible, basically, because I want to separate the sky from the foreground. I've got a good example here of how that looks. I'm going to click View. I'm going to click Invert because I want what I've done to dynamic contrast, which is increase the medium and the large, both a little bit, something like that. I'm going to go a little bit more here, but I inverted it after I created it because I want it to apply to the building and basically the foreground. So let me show you the before. There it is, and the after. And the reason this is so powerful is because if you're like me, you isolate your edits between foreground and sky, and luminosity masking can come in really handy to help you do that, including using the levels down here. Now that I've got this, it's super easy just to use this tool, or excuse me, use this mask again and again with different filters. So I'm going to go from dynamic contrast, and I'm going to go over to tone enhancer. And because I already copied the mask, I can just come over here and click paste. And once again, white reveals, black conceals. As you probably know, that's what my mask looks like. And so I can come over here and just slightly increase the exposure in the foreground to brighten it just a little bit, maybe something like that and add a little bit of contrast as well. So there's before and there's current state. So I like that, but I'm not done. I'm gonna go to Color Enhancer because I also wanna work some on the colors in the building and the grass. So again, I've already got the mask. I'm just gonna paste it and get on with my, uh, my edits here. I'm gonna start with a little bit of vibrance bump because I do want these colors to be a bit more vibrant. So I'm gonna do something about like that, but I'm gonna come down to these specific color ranges down here and make specific targeted adjustments. This uh, On orange, I'm gonna start with a hue. I'm gonna go negative about a 13, just making it a little bit richer of an orange. And I'm gonna increase the saturation of that color uh, about a 15 or 16. And so I'm just making that orange kind of pop a little bit more. Now, I also wanna go into the yellow. And so yellow, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this hue to about a 60. And the reason why is, as you see, that yellow is really impacting the green in the grass because I'm actually working on the grass even though it doesn't look like it. What I'm gonna do is take the saturation down, like a negative 30, and I'm gonna take the brightness down, like a negative 20, 22, something like that, just a little bit less bright. Uh, and then I'm gonna go into the greens as well. So in the greens, I'm gonna take the saturation to negative 100 and the brightness the same. And so as you can see, by adjusting the yellows, I was impacting the greens. It's something to think about. Whenever you're playing with grass, there's a huge amount of yellow in that green grass. And this adjustment on the yellow helped me control that in addition to the adjustment I did on the green. And of course, the orange helped me impact the building. So if I come over here and take a look at this, there it is before, a little bit less saturated, a little bit flatter color in the building, bright kind of vibrant grass, and now, 
grass is much more muted. It's kind of fading, for lack of a better word, which I like because I don't want the eyes to be like, oh, look at that grass. I want you to look at the building, and I think I've achieved that by targeting those adjustments thanks to the luminosity mask. And now that I've got all that in place, I'm gonna go play with the sky. So I'm gonna go add a filter, dynamic contrast. And once again, I'm gonna paste this mask, but I'm gonna invert it. So if I view the mask, there you go. White reveals, black conceals, I can hide that view. I'm gonna copy it because it's quicker to just copy it and paste it each time than it is to paste it and invert it. So I've copied the sky mask, which is just the inverted version of the first mask that I built. And what I'm gonna do is take all these to the negative, something about like this, you know, like negative 40-ish basically, but I'm gonna bump the vibrance up a bit because I want the sky to be a little bit more vibrant and I'm gonna work on some of the colors and tones next, but basically negative dynamic contrast, smooth that out quite a bit. There it is before, there it is now. Not a huge difference, it's kind of hard to tell, but this next filter will help quite a bit, and that is Photo Filter. And because I've already got the mask for the sky copied, I can just come in here and click Paste, and it goes in, so I've isolated the sky, I've got the mask there. Now I just need to adjust things. I'm gonna leave 240 as my hue, but I'm taking my amount down quite a bit to like an eight or nine. I don't want that blue of a sky. I'm gonna actually take the saturation down a little bit as well. So let's call that about a negative 30. And I'm gonna use this polarizer and I'm gonna to go to 57. So something about like that. So let me show you the before. There it is. And after, I think the blue looks a little bit better. There's the before, there's a couple of different kind of shades of blue, the way the clouds and the sky behind it are looking, and I didn't really like it, to be honest. Adding this blue photo filter kind of helps smooth that out a little bit, which I like. And now I'm gonna do one more filter for this guy, Tone Enhancer, go into the mask. Remember, I've already got it copied, so I'm just gonna click paste, stick it in there, and here I'm gonna bump up the exposure a tiny bit, gonna add some contrast to the sky. I'm gonna pull the highlights down quite a bit, so that's like a negative 50. And while I'm at it, I'm down here at detail, I'm just going to go negative 100, provides a little further smoothing. And as you just saw, it really came in and that separation between the clouds and the sky behind it decreased even further. So let me show you a tone enhancer. There it is before. Seems like a little bit splotchy, uh, more splotchy of a sky. And there it is now. It looks a, to me a little bit smoother overall. I like that look. Uh, and then I'm just going to wrap this up with a vignette. It's going to be a big softy, one of my favorites. And the opacity is going to go down to about a 50, simply because I don't want a heavy vignette. I want kind of a soft vignette, kind of a subtle vignette, so I just reduce the opacity. One of the other things I love about on one, just having that opacity slider for every single filter. So there's the vignette before and after. For me, the big thing was isolating the sky and isolating the foreground, being able to use the mask to specifically target my edits into those specific areas. Ultimate amount of control, and it really comes down to create the luminosity mask, use levels to refine it, and using those two things together, I think has made me able to make better edits overall using on one. So if I show you the before and after, now you're gonna see a little bit of that vertical wonkiness there, but if you look at the before and after, you know, you can see that we've done quite a bit to this photo based on using those luminosity masks. And the full preview, there it is before, too dark in the foreground, a little too bright in the sky, the colors are off, the tones are off, there's not enough detail, all that kind of stuff. Luminosity mask, levels, isolate each one, apply different edits to the foreground based on the different filters, turn around, do the same things in the sky with tone enhancer, dynamic contrast, whatever it is that you need, and target those edits specifically, and I end up with a final product that I frankly really like quite a bit. But now that I see it, I actually think I'm gonna do one more thing and I'm gonna add a filter. I'm gonna come over here and get color adjustment and I'm gonna go into the blue and I'm gonna take that saturation down. It feels a little too blue for me. So I think reducing that a little bit makes it look a little bit more natural. And I can just do that across the entire photo because I don't have a significant amount of blue anywhere else. It's mostly just in the sky. Anyway, luminosity mass levels, super powerful, super amazing, incredible control over where you can target your adjustments, which ends up giving you better results. That's how I do it, my friends. Hope it gave you some ideas. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and I'll be back really soon. You guys take care of yourselves, and until then, adios.